This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. The last uh, decade or so, we've seen a little higher commodity prices, and that has stimulated some interest in fungicide seed treatments. As the commodity prices have gone down again, people are starting to question, do I really need to do this or do I not? So I would say if you're not interested in using a, a fungicide seed treatment on all your wheat, that I would set priorities in terms of wheat that you're planning to bring onto your farm as new varieties that you're going to save for your own seed. There's a number of different seedborne diseases we might be concerned about this time. Some of them are just uh, strictly seedborne or have a very uh, loose association with uh, some soilborne factors. Would be diseases like common bunt or uh, another name for that is stinking smut because of the strong fishy odor that that particular fungus is able to produce in contaminated grain. Another one might be loose smut. And then remember last year, we had a disease reemerge after a long break of uh, more than 30 years, a disease called flag smut. Mm -hmm. And all three of those would be major targets of primarily seedborne only uh, contaminants of wheat seed. We might consider fungicide seed treatments for controlling diseases like fusarium. Either it can be a seedborne, uh, come in on uh, seed lots that were affected by uh, fusarium head blight in the previous year. And there's a seedborne phase of that fusarium fungus that can affect the germination of the seed lot and can also cause uh, damping off or seedling blight type of diseases where the young seedlings become diseased and collapse and die before they even emerge in many cases. But uh, most of the fungicide seed treatments that are marketed widely in the state now, I think, include one or more active ingredients that are going to give a fairly broad spectrum and control uh, those smut diseases, the common bunt and loose smut, flag smut, uh, quite easily. And then uh, where we get into some differences is in the control of seedborne fusarium or some of those other more difficult to, to control fungi. It's going to be a balance here to decide <clears throat> what are the priority fields, what are the priority costs. These uh, seedborne diseases can cause uh, a lot of problems for us. So certainly, if you look at it in terms of uh, insurance, that this is a pretty low-cost thing uh, to, for wheat producers to do when it comes to the, p the potential losses that they could experience. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. 